do a lot of research. And there's a lot of money to be made. Uh, research laboratories, universities, hospitals would be the people who would acquire lost pets. And they would, uh, they would go after those pets because they're cheap. I don't know, I guess people are making money on it because they're getting basically free animals. A whole lot of women and men buy a lot of these cosmetic products. So these, these companies and corporations that do the research in this area make or stand to make a whole lot of money. So they, they are actively involved in doing research all of the time. And the other people that do research are universities. That's a, that's a different institution with a different objective versus the corporations that do research with the, with the sole purpose of making money. So you've got these two types of groups or institutions that do research for different reasons. They could go to uh, breeders who breed these animals but they would be charged much more money. That's quite a price differential, isn't it? Yeah. Imagine that a company can get an animal for, for such a small price and you wanted to adopt an animal which does a service to the pound and does a service to society, you gotta pay that kind of uh, money. It just almost doesn't make any sense. really inexpensive as compared to, for example, the beagles that we saved last year. Those beagles would have been anywhere from five to six hundred dollars, maybe even up to seven hundred dollars per animal. It doesn't, it's not the, the pound that sets the price, it's the law. And the price for an animal is very low in Ontario. Because I'm sure that anybody that's using animals for testing has a difficult time or has to pay big bucks in order to get it done. So if you can go to a pound and have it done much, much more cheaply, then uh, they're going to try to protect that right as much as possible. In, in 2009, we've used over three million animals in Canada for research. I know, for example, I believe at St. Mike's, they used to study cardiac arrhythmias and a bunch of other heart things, so they used to get big dogs with big chests and put them on treadmills and make them run and run and run and run and run and do all sorts of different things, test their heart, give them drugs. Often the research is just completely repetitive over a period of 9, 10, 12, 15, 20 years. Is it necessary? Like, what's your definition of necessary? When I was given a tour at the University of Toronto, they had had dogs there for 10 years. So dogs that came out of people's homes, uh, that were loved by families, lived for 10 years in a tiny little cage at the University of Toronto, with people who didn't love them. These are all adoptable animals. The research facilities will not take unadoptable animals. If you look at the requisition form, they want friendly, they put friendly animals on that because they don't want to be bitten. All animal teaching can be done through alternatives. 
We can stop for sure using animals to test cosmetics, to test household products, to test pesticides, to test environmental stuff. Anything that has to go in the environment that needs to be tested on the animal shouldn't be put there to begin with. If we decided that we wanted to live in an environment in which we didn't have to like, prevent dandelions from growing on the front lawn, we test all that stuff on animals. I mean, for heaven's sakes, is that where we're at? These are fully adoptable animals who are dying to get into a loving, permanent home, and uh, a research facility is not that. There are a lot of, of ways that the public can become more uh, aware of um, the issue of seizures and about animal welfare. There are these wonderful groups, wonderful volunteers who rescue dogs and then they find that beautiful dog a new home. So there's lots of really amazing people doing really amazing good work. Project Jesse was set up in 1991 by Animal Alliance. It's our rescue network of volunteers uh, volunteer drivers, uh, shelter staff, veterinarians, who uh, assist in the program to avoid the, the animal being sent to research. We were notified about a dog named Jessie, and we were told that she was going to be sent to research, and we couldn't uh, get to her in time. We got a call from the one of the people at the pound who was frantic to say that the research truck was coming and this dog was slated to go to the University of Toronto for research, could we come and get her? So we got in our car and got there and we're late. The research truck arrived before we did and she was gone. Uh, we vowed never to forget Jessie. She was a family pet and ended up, uh, spent her last days as a research subject. And we just decided we can't forget her. And so we named the project after in 1991. The city of Oshawa was giving about 500 dogs and cats a year and the city of Bowmanville was giving maybe 300. That's 800 animals from two shelters that were going for research. And so it was clear that we couldn't save everybody, um, but that we would do the best we could. So we spent the next decade or so going to every municipality, getting them to stop. And we've done that pretty much throughout Ontario. When the people who go there, who care for the animals, and, and people who go and do this work love animals, that's why they go to take care of animals in shelters. If they have to walk them around the back door and put them in a research laboratory truck, it's soul destroying, and so it really undermines their attempts to do good things for animals.